Hello there, I'm Black Bright and my um, Wi-Fi is back on this evening. It's been three days. No Wi-Fi, no TV, no home phone. Anyway, it's back on now so I thought I would do a quick video before it goes down because something's been playing on my mind. And yeah, I thought I would talk about fear and a lot of it attract what we fear you know and I was trying to think you know uh, you know you you see people all the time and they tend to be a bit lethargic and a bit you know not really they can't be bothered they don't care they do their job they come home if they've got a family they see to they see to the family they do their duty if they've got kids you know they do what they need to do but a lot of the time, a lot of people lack enthusiasm. They don't have that sense of excitement. They don't kind of feel, oh, I can't wait to get home. I can't wait to get to work. I can't wait to do this. And it's almost like everything is such an effort. And I was trying to think, what is that about? And I started thinking about all the things that we fear. And if we are surrounded by fear, it will bring us down. It will make us feel lethargic. It will, will, it will sap our energy. It will um, make us feel demotivated. So I've listed here a, 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 some things that people fear and they may not even realise that they fear it that could be pushing them down okay so we've got fear of uncertainty we could say brexit is could be a part of that on a subconscious level you watch it all the time you think oh yeah when it happens it happens but on a subconscious level depending on your circumstances it could make you a bit fearful you've got fear of instability if Brexit does happen, you've got the recession. You've got all of the things that come out of that. You've got fear of being done over, the scammers. You go online, is somebody gonna try to rip you off? Is somebody gonna knock on your door and try to rip you off? Is somebody gonna be on the phone and try to rip you off or a member of your family? If you go on email, are the emails genuine? Always having to be on the alert. Do you know how much mental energy that takes up? Then you've got fear of abuse. You've got, um, I don't know if any of you saw that video that's circulating, it's gone viral about this policeman. He handcuffed this guy and he's beating him with a baton. You've got, you've got that to contend with. Police violence, abuse. You've got, you know, so many homes with domestic abuse. You would not believe how many domestic abuse situations pass my desk every single week and all different nationalities it's not even one it's all different nationalities and it's increasing because of pressure so you've got people who fear domestic abuse they fear that key coming through the door they wonder if their partner's going to come in drunk they wonder if their partner's going to start an argument they wonder if their partner is going to walk out you know what i mean you've got that fear of loss how long is my partner going to stay with me? Will my partner stay with me if I get ill? Will my partner stay with me if, you know, if I break my leg or if I lose my job? You know, people have that fear. You do have people who are in settled relationships. But I know somebody, they was married for years. And then all of a sudden they met somebody at work and his wife, who he had been with for like 50 years, thought she was in a stable relationship. He came home one day and said, look, I've met somebody else. And he, he walked out and never turned back. He gave her a generous um, allowance because she would have never planned for that. So you just don't know. Um, you've got fear of being disadvantaged, you know, by lack of knowledge, lack, lack of information. You know, is, is somebody going to say something to you and you don't quite understand and it's going to make you look stupid or it's going to make you feel, you know, inferior. You've got fear of being betrayed by friends, by 
you know, relationships, that kind of thing. You've got fear of deportation for the overstayers and those who might have committed a criminal offence some time ago and not quite sure about their um, status. Fear of going outside. Will the police be waiting? Will they be stopped if they go here, if they go there? What are the chances of them being stopped at any one point? You've got fear of being caught out. You know, some of us... We pretend we're somebody that we're not. And when you live a lie, you're always wondering, are they going to catch me out? How long can I keep this up for? Because some, it will come out in the end, whatever you're trying to do, whatever disguise you're putting on. You've got fear of failure. That, that affects so many people. They don't want to fail. And they look on themselves and feel as though they failed when things don't go right. You've got fear of someone not liking who you really are. You know, some of us, we, we put on some kind of bravado, we put on a front, and we think that if somebody knows who we really are, they're not going to like us. So we've got that innate fear. Yeah. Oh, this thing is bloody playing up again. Uh, we've got that fear. We've got fear of being killed. I mean, that might not be at the forefront, but, you know, every day you're watching on the screens. I was watching Google Box a while ago. And, you know, this this guy said, oh, you know, it seems like everybody's cutting their throats these days. You know, that was nothing. And, oh, that shark is going to come in and eat her up. And, you know... You know, I don't even know if they fear of being killed or if they just feel as though it is going to happen to someone else. But subconsciously, there's always, most people fear death. They know it's going to happen. They don't know how it's going to happen. And it's one of those ominous things. Fear of being disliked. Some people, they just want to be liked especially in the workplace or, you know, in university, all different types of places. They just want to be liked. So they fear of being disliked, a fear of not being accepted. I remember growing up and I thought, you know, I had to do all of these things to make my mum love me and want me and say nice things to me and give me compliments you know so you're always vying for your parents attention not everyone but you know you want that feeling of acceptance um fear of not being understood or not understanding something you know some people that that you know that does it affect them if they um, feel as though they're not being understood or people get them wrong? Um, fear of disappointment. We're all going to be disappointed at some point in our lives. So it, we just have to accept it when it comes. Things aren't going to be rosy every day. Fear of losing control. Some people, they, they're in, they live in this world where they just want to control everything. And when things, when they can't control it, they get a bit nervous and edgy and they don't know what to do. You know, if they can't control a situation or control a person, they're totally lost. So they use different mechanisms to control. Um, fear of vulnerability. Some people don't want to allow themselves to be vulnerable. So they put up this bravado. You know, it happens in so many situations. And it's just really because they think if somebody's going to see their vulnerability, they're going to take advantage of them. So they have that fear. So they're always protecting themselves. And in some cases, they're sabotaging themselves. Um, fear for your children and your family. When your children go out the front door, do you worry about about them are they going to come home from schools um, okay you know are they going to get to school okay is any going to, anything going to happen to them while they're at, at school is anything going to happen to your family members while they're going to and from work or whichever wherever they're going so you have that kind of fear on your mind fear of losing your home some people when they've lost their jobs especially some of these people who um, are unable to access um, public funds and who've been cut off from the NHS and been cut off from every kind of benefit and can't get a driving license, can't um, do anything to make any money. They could fear losing their home, fear losing their family. Um, what about fear of getting ill and terminal illness? You, know, you see so many things on, you hear so many people that all of a sudden they've got cancer. You know, people who were walking up healthy, all of a sudden they drop dead. You know, and you kind of think, oh my God, you know, I wonder if I've got something. I wonder if that pain I'm feeling is something terminal. 
um, fear of underperforming. Sometimes you're at work and you think, oh, I wonder if I did my job well enough. I wonder if it's good enough. I wonder if I'm good enough. Fear of dying alone. Some people, they live alone. Lots of people live alone. And they're afraid of dying alone. They're afraid of being alone. That Have that fear. And uh, the last one is not really the last one, but the last one I've written down is fear of never finding happiness. So can you imagine having all those fears and the media fuels those fears day after day after day in so many different ways and we don't even realize it. A lot of times, sorry, subliminally we're made to feel defeated and we feel demoralized and it is because we're always on the alert we're always in protective mode we're always trying to prevent what we fear and because we prevent what we work because we're trying to prevent what we fear we can't reach our full potential we don't even know what our potential is we don't listen to our instincts we don't listen to our inner voices because it's all bogged down with fear um Sometimes, have you ever wondered, you know, you're driving along and you get from A to B. You don't even know how you've got there because you're an automatic pilot. It's, you don't have time to look at or look at the scenery. You don't have time to know what's going on. To I mean, you might, on automatic pilot, you put on your indicator and you overtake and you come back in. You look through your mirror. Everything's on automatic pilot, but you're not enjoying the ride. And that is what's happening in your life. You're almost like a robot. You're just going along with the motions. You're not feeling anything really. This isn't everyone, of course, but a lot of people, they're not feeling anymore. They're just doing because they feel as though they have to. And it's because they're being weighed down with all these subliminal fears. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, when you are an automatic pilot, it's a lazy brain and it needs to be re-energized, need to be able to take focus, need not to react to what's going on, need not to um, assume that things are going one way and reacting in that way because that is what you perceive. A lot of people, they create their own stories in their heads and they act out that story and they don't even know what the ending of that story is, but they create their own ending to the story, which never even had a beginning. So we have to kind of think about how we actually change our fears into faith, into taking a leap of faith. How can we do that? We can though, if we start kind of really start of taking a new look at what we're doing, being more focused, being more, you know, not just giving in to what's happening, giving in to the TV, being more focused about what you're watching and why you're watching and being more analytical. Instead of having all those negative films and words and everything going into your brain, reinforcing and making you feel as though you just cannot be bothered. You cannot make the effort. So I just wanted to say, um, but you can take control of your life and that will turn things around. Um, most things we cannot control, of course, because life is just like that. Can you imagine if you could control everything? Life wouldn't be life wouldn't be very nice. So um, even though what you can't control makes you frustrated and angry, if you could control everything, your life would be boring. So now the only thing you do need to control, you need to control your fancy, your finances, save how much as what you can, however small. You need to control your income. Um, even if it means creating your own jobs, creating a different lifestyle, doing something that can make money. Remember, we're all born with talents, regardless of whether it's gardening, whether it's cooking. Have you seen how much um, subscribers these guys have who cook? I mean, some of them have got over a million subscribers and they've got these adverts going on all over the place. So, you know, they're making bucks and they're doing it based on something they love cooking. Can you imagine? You've got people cooking. You could be gardening. If you like listening. You could be a counsellor. If you like reading, you could go and 
have a reading service and go and read to the elderly or you know what I mean no matter what you love doing there is a service for it you can create a service for it and that would give you a sense of pro control by having a sense of control it would renew your enthusiasm um yeah be more loving and supportive to your families don't be so sensitive don't take things personally and our future where nothing is guaranteed so what we do we live for today do our best for each day and try to put more positive energy into our lives and i hope this is useful bye bye